Hi everyone, and welcome to Easy Tutorial Vids. In this tutorial series, we'll be covering FL Studio. Now, even though it looks fairly advanced and intimidating, like when you go here, for example, and see all of these options, it's actually not that hard to learn. I'll try to teach you how to make music with this program in the shortest amount of time as possible. Yes, people, that actually means that you're not going to be staring at half an hour long feature film like videos. You know, as often seen on the internet. The first maybe two videos will actually be the only ones in which I'll be talking this much, especially the first part of this video. Sorry for that. So let me now give you an overview of this crash course. In the first and maybe second video, I'll briefly show you FL Studio's workflow and user interface. Then. I'll explain what the difference is between the versions that FL Studio installs on your system, so you can determine which one to use. After this, we'll configure FL Studio to your needs, like how to add these custom folders for example. We'll even look into configuring your MIDI keyboard properly, meaning that I'll not only show you how to assign hardware knobs and faders, but also how to fix your system's recording timing issue, like when notes are shifted to the left or right after you're done recording. Now, even though I'll be setting up this keyboard, you'll still be able to follow along with yours. And after we've configured everything, I'll dive deeper into the channel rack, the piano roll, the playlist, and the mixer from which at least in this video you'll get a basic understanding of. And of course, it's a good thing to keep organized. I actually have a very easy method of how to rename and recolor everything. Because unfortunately in FL Studio, currently on version 12.3, renaming and recoloring isn't automated between the plugins, mixer and playlist, which I'll demonstrate now. Let me first give this preloaded kick sample a color. and route it to the mixer. Now, when I rename and change the color, see, the routed mixer channel remains the same. But don't worry, I have a good and fast workaround for this, which I'll share with you. Oh, and uh, by the way, I haven't seen any article or video showing this method, so if a block or whatever pops up giving the same tips on quickly renaming and changing colors, I'll pretty much know you got that from me. So please be polite and refer to my video about organizing your project. To make things understandable, I've chosen to make this crash course in a different sequence than you'd normally expect, because normally you'd start first by configuring a program and then use it, right? But since it's a tutorial, I think it's more useful to briefly show you the workflow of a program first, followed by a short breakdown of its user interface. Because then you'll have a clearer picture of the whole thing as you follow the rest of the tutorial. To make this as short and easy as possible, I will be making separate videos in which we can concentrate on a specific part of FL Studio. Also, I'll divide each video in different sections, and right here you'll be able to see not only on what section we're currently on, but also the ones that are up next. So if you see something of your interest, you could just fast forward to that part. To make things even easier to understand, I added this toolbar here, so you can see what function keys I'm using. And by the way, if you're curious on how to add this toolbar, go to an empty space, right click and select shortcut panel 3. You can also see what key I'm pressing on my typing keyboard here. 
And as you've already noticed, on the mouse cursor, you can see when I'm using the left, right, and middle button, which <laughs> is also a shortcut for loading plugins. And you can even see when I'm scrolling up or down. As I already mentioned, in this first video, I'll briefly show you FL Studio's workflow and user interface. So for now, don't focus on how I'm doing what, just concentrate on FL Studio's workflow. After this, we'll dive in deeper with the next videos. To start an empty project, go to File and select New. FL Studio's workflow is basically this. First you add plugins here in the channel rack. And by the way, plugins loaded in the channel rack are sound generators. Then you make a pattern by recording or programming your song. Through the step sequencer, which I never use, or the piano roll, which I only use. This because it's more flexible. Recording is, well, recording what you play. You can either record sounds through a microphone or record MIDI data with a MIDI keyboard or even your typing keyboard. Programming is basically just drawing out MIDI data with your mouse, like so. Left mouse button for adding notes. and right mouse button for deleting notes. And this is true for both the step sequencer and the piano roll. I'll draw out a basic drum beat and piano melody. And this is what in FL Studio we call a pattern. You can then manage your patterns here in the Patterns Manager by renaming them, reordering them, and some other stuff. If you select Split by Channel, I get separate patterns for the beat and piano, which is also automatically renamed after the plugin names. Then finally in the playlist, you can then sequence out the patterns to create your song. I'll select the pattern here, then brush it out over the playlist to my liking. You can also delete patterns with the right mouse button. Let's create this short song with both the kick and piano. When I press play here, I can listen to the whole song. Pressing play here will play the pattern. If you want to listen to the other patterns, select them here. You can also switch between song and pattern modes here. Now, if you're a bit more advanced and want to add effects to your instruments, or even mix and master your song, you can do that here in the mixer. Let's add a clap to the pattern and put a reverb effect on it, which is routed to the second mixer insert. So, select the second insert and add the reverb effect. Oh wait, let me put the track inspector to the left, so you can see which effect I'm loading. Unlike the channel rack, the plugins you load in the mixer aren't instruments, but effects. And by the way, the proper way to add certain effects, like this here reverb, is by adding them into one of these insert tracks, so you can then blend that effect in with the target track. But I'm not getting into that right now. When you're done with your song, you can export it here. You can select the output format here, or in the Save As menu. And finally, when you press Save, this menu pops up, in which you can again choose the output format, 
and also the quality settings. When done, you can start rendering the file by hitting start or background rendering. Background rendering will do the process in the background, so you can do other stuff on your computer. You know, like maybe watch and comment on my videos, or maybe even subscribe to my channel. So now we'll check out FL Studio's user interface, which is very cool and slick looking. The first thing I'd like to point out is this info bar over here. When you hover your mouse over anything, like buttons or faders, it doesn't only show you what it does, but also what hotkey to use to access that option. You can also find these hotkeys in menus here, And here. Learning and using these hot or short keys as they are also called will speed up your work. By now you've seen that FL Studio has these different windows for different functions. When you select a window, the title bar highlights. You can then minimize them here. Switch to full screen here. or by double clicking them, which I mostly do. You can move each window by selecting and dragging them. And as you can see, they snap to each other. You can also resize them by dragging the edges or corners, which also snap to each other. You can close the windows by hitting the X like so, or selecting them and hitting Escape. And finally, you bring them back through this toolbar here. The channel rack and browser, on the other hand, can only be opened and closed through the toolbar like so. Now, to complete this workflow and user interface overview of FL Studio, we will make a short song by recording a performance with a MIDI keyboard in the second part. Mm -hmm. 